welcome everyone. We appreciate you coming on behalf of uh, Village uh, Square and Florida Tax Watch. Uh, Tax Watch is going into its 30 year, 30th year. It's a nonprofit, nonpartisan taxpayer watchdog and research institute. And uh, these topics tonight are very near and dear to our heart. So starting us off is Florida Tax Watch's Director of Tax Research, Kurt Winter, who will explain some background on uh, what we're talking about, what we're going to be talking about, and provide some facts and figures as a starting point. Kurt? Thank you very much. Can anybody hear me? Almost. Almost? Um, I'll try to talk louder. This uh, first slide up here shows the general revenue collections coming into the state since 1991. And as you can see, until recent years, Florida's tax system has actually performed pretty well. We've had stable uh, revenue growth for years. If you look at what's happened in the 90s, um, that's pretty remarkable steady growth. Of, it was about 7.5% every year. The legislature even cut taxes during that time, and revenue continued to grow. We got a little uh, complacent during that period, I believe. So as you see, it kept going. The last recession, uh, around 01, 02, it's, that started to slow down a little bit. But even during that time, Florida was the only major state whose revenues actually grew from year to year during the recession. So although we slowed down, we were still doing fairly well. As we came out of the recession, two things happened. We had the housing bubble, and we had rebuilding from the hurricanes, that series of hurricanes. What that did was brought in record amounts of revenue. Uh, sales taxes from the rebuilding, documentary stamp, tangible taxes from all the, the, the home sales, and revenue took off. And as you can see, it peaked there in uh, 06 at about $27 billion. And again, this is general revenue. As the bubble burst and the economy started to go south, and Florida was really the, one of the first states to start feeling the recession, and it hit us harder than, than a lot of them. Uh, go back a little bit, Rob, one more. You can see that something's happened that's never happened in Florida before, and that's actual collections fell from one year to the next. The year we're in right now is the third straight year that's happened. So it's never happened before in the history of Florida. It's happened now three years in a row. So not only did the economy start our revenues to fall, they fell from an artificially high place from the housing bubble and the burst. They're expecting some growth next year, though not much, and we'll see there'll be a new estimating conference, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if those already pessimistic projections are lowered. Rob, you go to the next slide. This is what it looks like for the budget that they're coming into. The legislature will start working on, uh, they're starting to work on now. We're going to have about $22.8 billion in general revenue available for the next budget. That's under current estimates that were made in November. In the current budget that we're in right now, that the legislature cut some in special session, the governor vetoed some of those cuts, there are recurring general revenue expenditures of $24.1 billion. That means only to fund what's currently in the budget at that level we're $1.3 billion short of that. The, um, the Economic and Demographic Research Arm of the legislature did a long-term revenue, revenue outlook, fiscal outlook, and came up with what they called critical and high-priority needs. And basically, this is what they need in order to do what you would call a continuation budget, which is basically funding what's in the budget now for the growth that's, that's going to be expected. And if you add in the critical needs, which they describe as things that, by law, you basically have to do, and then high priority needs, which are the other things that are in the budget now, you add on a minimum cash reserve of $200 million, which is the lowest they probably want to go, you're going to have a shortfall of between $2.8 billion and $4.7 billion, just to fund what's in the budget now. And Rob, you go to the next one. Uh, and again, we are talking about general revenue. And one thing I want to make a point of, people hear about having to cut 
a two and a half million dollar, three billion dollar shortfall, they know the budget's something like 66 billion dollars. They say, that, well, that might not be that much. But again, whenever you hear talk about shortfalls, budget cuts, it's almost always general revenue strictly. If you look at last year's budget, 66 billion dollars, only 39% of that, 25.6 billion was general revenue. Next slide. Of that 25.6 in general revenue, 79% of it was for education and health and human services. That means there's $5.5 billion of general revenue for everything else in the budget that, that they fund with general revenue. Most of that is public safety. There's really only a billion dollars in the budget for what you would consider governmental operations and general revenue. Next slide. So as you can see, uh, non-education, health, and human services spending in the budget GR spending as a percent of the total budget is only 8%. That's everything else except for education, health, and human services. People always ask the question, why does education and health and human services seem to bear the brunt of the cuts? And this is the reason why. Other things like transportation have their own trust fund. Other uh, <coughs> estimating conferences and budget processes, they also are going to have to make cuts. Other trust funds deal with them separately. But when you hear about cuts, it's general revenue, and that means education and health and human services and public safety. And that's my basic uh, setup for the rest of the speakers. And I'll, unless there's any questions, I'll turn it back over to Harvey.